Ernest, my Ernest. You're going with my darling. May I ask if you are engaged to this lady? To the this lady? <laughs> of course not. We're going to put a silly idea like that in your head. I knew there must be some misunderstanding, Miss Fairfax. The gentleman whose arm is at present around your waist is my guardian, Mr. Jo John Worthing. I beg your pardon? This is Uncle Jack. Jack? Oh! Here is my Ernest. My own love. A moment, Ernest. May I ask, are you engaged to this lady? To what young lady? Good heavens, Gwendolyn? Yes, to good heavens, Gwendolyn. I mean, Gwendolyn. Of course not. What could have put such an idea into your pretty little head? Thank you, you may. I felt there was some slight error, Miss Cardew. The gentleman who is now embracing you is my cousin, Mr. Algernon Moncrief. Algernon Moncrief? Oh! Are you called Algernon? I cannot deny it. Oh! Is your name really John? I could deny it if I liked. I could deny anything if I liked. But well, my name certainly is John. <laughs> it's been for years. A gross deception has been practiced on all of us. My poor wounded Sicily. My sweet wrong Gwendolyn. You only call me sister, will you not? There is just one question I would like to be allowed to ask my guardian. An admirable idea, Mr. Worthing. There's just one question I would like to be permitted to put to you. Where is your brother Ernest? We are both engaged to be married to your brother Ernest, so it is a matter of some importance to us to know where your brother Ernest is at present. Gwendolyn? Is it? Is it painful for me to be forced to speak the truth? It is the first time in my life that I have ever been reduced to such a painful position, and I am really quite inexperienced in doing anything of the gun. However, I will tell you quite frankly, that I have no bother, Ernest. I have no bother at all. I never had a bother in my life, and I certainly have not the smallest intention of ever having one in the future. No brother at all? No. Had your brother of any kind? No, not of any kind. Not now. Not shall I ever have a brother of any kind at all. A brother is a special kind of friend. A friend that I can never have. Not at all. Never can it be. Never. I'm afraid it is quite clear, Cicely, that neither of us is engaged to be married to anyone. It is not a very pleasant position for a young girl to suddenly find herself in, is it? Let us go into the other room. They will hardly venture you to come after us there. No. Men are so cowardly, aren't they? This ghastly state of things is what you call bun I suppose. Yes, and a wonderful bun bearing it is. The most wonderful bun I have ever had in my life. <laughs> well, you've no right whatsoever to bun here. That is absurd. One has a right to bun wherever one chooses. Every serious bun knows that. I disagree, sir. Bunbury is a gentleman's sport, and therefore must be played like a gentleman. You are not a gentleman, at that all, one might add, like a gentleman. Serious Bunburyists! Good heavens! Well, one must be serious about something. If one wants to have any amusement in life, I happen to be serious about Bunbury. What on earth you are serious about, I have no idea, I know not even the remotest idea. About everything I should fancy, you have such an absolutely trivial nature. Well, the only small satisfaction I have in the whole of this wretched business is that your friend Bunbury is quite exploded. You won't be able to run down to the country quite as often as you used to, dear Algy. And it's a very good thing, too. Your brother is a little off-color, isn't he, Jack? 
you won't be able to disappear to London quite so frequently as you wished. Your wicked custom was. And not a bad thing either. As for your conduct towards Miss Gardu, I must say that your taking in a sweet, simple, innocent girl like that is quite inexcusable. To say nothing of the fact that she is in my ward. I can see no possible defense at all for your deceiving a brilliant, clever, thoroughly experienced young lady like Miss Fairfax. To say nothing of the fact that she is my cousin. I wanted to be engaged to Gwendolyn. That is all. I love Well, I simply wanted to be engaged to Cicely. I adore her. There is certainly of your marrying this Paolo. I don't think there is a much likelihood, Jack, of you and Miss Fairfax being united. Mm. Well, that is no business of yours. Well, if it was any of my business, I wouldn't talk about it. Well, very well, to talk about my business, only people like stockbrokers do that, and they marry the parties. How can you sit there calmly eating muffins when we are in a horrible trouble in the can make out? You seem to be perfectly heartless. Well, I can't eat muffins in an agitated manner. So I have a whole group on my car. One should always eat muffins quite calmly. It's the only way to eat them. I say, it is perfectly heartless you're eating muffins. It's all one of the circumstances. When I'm in trouble eating, I don't want to come off my throne. Indeed, when I'm in really great trouble, as anyone knows me intimately will tell you, I refuse everything except food and drink. At the present moment, I am eating muffins because I am unhappy. Besides, I am particularly fond of muffins. Well, that is no reason why you should eat them all in that greedy way. I wish you could have tea cake instead. I don't like tea cake. Good heavens! I suppose a man may eat his own muffin in his own garden. But you said it was perfectly heartless to eat muffins. I said it was perfectly heartless of you, under the circumstances. That is a very different thing. That may be, but the muffins are the same. Algy, I wish to goodness you would go.